back, she's gonna. Oh, show that's right. Don't worry about, about it. We just got a plug <laughs> for <laughs> Dead Man's Curve. Right, yeah. What's, right. Oh, right. Okay. How you doing? Uh, Dad, don't worry about it. We're yeah, gonna be plugging like mad. This okay. is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com at the 11th annual, well, pause the annual because of the mess up the past couple of years, but we're not gonna mention that. Dead Man's uh, Curve Wild Hot Rod weekend over here in New Jersey. Love that name. We're speaking with Bob. Bob is a hot rodder from way back when, from Motor City, Detroit, all the way in to New Jersey with the car he actually built. This is, as you can all recognize, the Red Baron. It's a Red Baron. Yeah. And Bob built the original. Now, you were saying that That's you were great. taken by the monogram model? Well, yes. The car was designed for monogram models mm -hmm. by a gentleman named Tom Daniel out of Las Vegas. And they made a model of it. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they made plastic model kits. So right, of course. I yeah. happened to run into that model when they were first uh, premiering it. And... Uh, got permission from them to build a full-size car, and that was in 1968. And uh, within about a year, we, I had, I had uh, made a deal with a guy in Detroit who was a noted customizer, and he built a car for me. Very good. I did not do the work on the car. I just look at it. But okay. I'm not a customizer. But what I did was I put on car shows all over the United States. I started... I started, well, in 1982, I ran 100 car shows in the United States, Canada, England, Alaska, and Hawaii. So oh my that's what gosh. we did. So we built these cars to take to our shows to attract attendance. What were some of the uh, shows that you uh, produced? What were some of the shows you produced? Well, the biggest one that I ran that, uh, that I'm probably most proud of is the Detroit Autorama, which oh my gosh. has a national reputation. And I ran that for from 1961 I produced it from 61 to 94 but uh, I started in business in 1960 because of that show which had started in 1953 that's where I got the idea and then I took that idea all across the country and across Canada and we went to England and uh, so I ran car shows for 51 years Wow! And, uh, had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people, and uh, built a lot of great cars. Uh, and uh, it was just a whole new world, and I never dreamt in my uh, early life that that's what I was gonna end up doing, but that's what I did. And I also raced circle track for 25 years. Oh my gosh. As if I didn't have enough to do. Yeah, right? Jeez, unbelievable. Now, the one thing which I gotta bring up, you bought the rights for the Red Baron from Monogram for how much? Ten bucks. Ten dollars. They sent me a six-page contract, which is framed and hanging in my office, and uh, I couldn't believe it. I read all through this contract, which was all legalese, and I, I couldn't find out what they wanted, and I got to the last paragraph, and there it was. We would, we would like to charge you the fee of ten dollars, so I wrote a check as quick as I could and made a deal with them. And surprisingly, I have never talked to those gentlemen since that time. Uh, I hope they appreciate what we did with the car because we showed the car for many, many years. And in fact, uh, in 2006, I sold the original car mm -hmm. to a great museum, the Speedway Museum of American Speed in Lincoln, Nebraska. Very good. And it's become uh, one of their main attractions. I'll put a um, footnote with the link to their site uh, on the video so you can catch up. Tell me about, okay, so this is a reproduction or a second build from That's three right. years ago. Yeah. Now you're using a Pontiac overhead cam six? Uh, yes. And the reason for that using that engine was that the original design, when Tom Daniel designed it, he simply took a German aircraft engine and blew it down mm -hmm. to fit in the car. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that. Right. We couldn't build a new engine, so we had to find an engine that looked somewhat comparable to the engine he had he had created. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chuck Miller uh, came up with this idea. I agreed with him, and uh, he found this engine in a junkyard. <laughs> 
and it was a real popular engine for maybe three or four years with Pontiac. Yeah. Uh, Did you ever get to meet um, DeLorean, who had uh, pushed for the? Uh, was that DeLorean who pushed for the overhead? Yeah, camp? it was DeLorean. Yeah. 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 Memory DeLorean. serves me correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever no, get to I meet John met him. Z? And, and I knew a lot of people at Pontiac, but I never met him. So. Ah, okay. Show me some of the features that you're really proud of with the Red Baron, please. Well, it, it, it all follows the, the sort of the German thing of the, of the you know, the German military. Mm -hmm. So it's got the Iron Cross in the, in the radiator. Right. In the hubcaps. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's followed throughout the car. This is a German helmet. Of course. Uh, and of course, the main thing is the top. Yes. which resembles a, a military helmet. Right. Uh, but Chuck even made the machine guns. Uh, he created the entire car uh -huh. uh, right, from the, right from the ground up and did a phenomenal job. So, this is uh, beautiful, uh, absolutely beautiful. I'm mean, going to sneak past. Now, when you crank the um, machine guns, do they uh, pop or anything? No, they don't do anything. Okay. But if you notice the gear shift, it's got a hand grenade on it. Oh, perfect. But that's an American hand grenade, not a... Yes, it is. That's, that's correct. That's Ma correct. No, a potato masher. That was it. Yeah, that's correct. And there's Chuck Miller right over there. Yeah. And who's... Oh, is that that uh, Big Daddy Roth? No, it's me, probably. Oh, okay. I see Roth on the I knee. signed it, I know. Very but, good. Uh, oh, my gosh. How do you drive this thing? <laughs> well, I've only driven it once, so... Oh, my it, gosh. These, these cars were idea cars uh -huh. to draw people in the show. And the best examples I can give you of something like that is just take the Batmobile, for example. Right. People would come just to see these cars. Yes. Because they were publicized in magazines or on TV or whatever, and mm -hmm. people knew what these cars were. Cars like the General Lee, like the Knight Rider. Mm -hmm. We used all those cars. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what this this part of the show consists of. Uh, yeah. So, so these are other cars that were built, uh, quite a few of them that were built as what we call feature attractions. These were not built to drive or to do anything with. Now, there were feature cars that were built to race and so forth, mm -hmm. and, uh, but these cars, these particular cars, were, were strictly idea cars to entice the public to come to the show to, to, mm -hmm. to participate and to take a good look at what hot riding is all about. Because these cars were all handmade, and that's what the whole hot rod sport's about. Now, this is all glass. Uh, actually, on my car, the body was steel and the top was glass. Wow. On this car, the entire car is fiberglass. Mm -hmm. I like this framework over here. That is yeah, Everything is handmade. Wow. Uh, including the gas tank. And uh, that is beautiful. It's just a very unique vehicle. That's for sure. And, and people love these, love this car. And some people have told me eventually Mattel made a, a big model of this car, die cast, mm -hmm. and people have told me that they feel this car sold the most models of any car that was brought out in kit form. Well, we're going to find I that out. I can't verify that. I can't verify that, but I know that it was an extremely model kit that sold millions of uh, models. Uh, yes. A lot of people come up to me at the shows and say, yeah, I remember building that car when I was 12 years old or something like that. So that is, this is absolutely amazing. Car. I just cannot get over this. The, now, this is a, a functioning car, fully functional. It starts and runs. It is, but it's not built to be driven around or anything like that. It's an idea car. Right. And built as an attraction for the events, and that's uh, Chuck Miller's emblem. He puts that on all the cars that he builds. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love the way he added just enough chrome to make it purdy. Yeah. That is good, that is good. And one thing, oh my gosh, is that tight. Wow. <laughs> I hope the motor mount stayed nice and strong. <laughs> Oh, this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I got to thank you very much for showing us around. This is fantastic. My but before Always I go, fun to talk about the car. I got to ask you one more question. <laughs> okay. This is important. 
You're an author. You just came out with a new book. Show me your book. Oh. Let's take okay. a walk over to the desk. Okay. So. Go this way. Either way, it doesn't matter. Let's see what we've got here. Because this is coming from the master, from the one who set it all up. Yeah, no problem. There we uh, go. I've published about 10 books. Uh-huh. Mostly about hot rods. And Very good. And this is our new book that... Larry Erickson and I did. Larry's uh, got a national reputation as a car designer, mm -hmm. and uh, it features a Red Baron on the cover. And Very it's good. really a great book. It's been out for just about a year and uh -huh. is, is selling very well. So that's why we're here at the show. We're going to be offering our book, and we'll be happy to sign it for people if that's, if that's what they want. That's fantastic. Uh, let's open it up. Let's take a look through, leaf through a couple pages, show everybody what we're dealing with. Oh my gosh. You just open it a little bit. I'm saying, I know that car. <laughs> there you go. Oh, jeez. Wow. You even got, Red Baron again. There you go. You even got into slot cars. Yeah. This is the car that just brought $2 million uh, when it sold recently. The, wow. The, uh, that's Barris, okay. Yeah. Very good. George Barris built that car. So, oh, fantastic. This is a chapter on uh, celebrities and George Barris mainly. Mm -hmm. And then there's a chapter on Ed Roth who built good. so many cars and created Ratfink. And there's lots of great car pictures. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> Dale Earnhardt, okay. One good guy. Oh, this is chock full of everything. But the storyline follows along, so it's a so it's a tells a story of the the car shows and how they evolved mm -hmm. and and the impact they've had on the hot rod sport. And here's a picture of Ed Roth, Billy Gibbons, and myself. That oh was my take, gosh! It was taken some years back. Yeah, a few years, just About one or 20. two. <laughs> oh my gosh! So. That is fantastic. Oh, teach your kids well, and of course, Beach Boys, Triple Threat. Wow. So there you have it. That's fantastic. I'm going to put the link on the video and in the description for you. So if Thank you, you want your book, you'll go directly uh, to Bob. And it's worth it. This is something for every hot rod library. And, of course, the perfect gift for the person who has everything and still has enough octane in their veins uh, to appreciate it. Thank you very much again. Thank I you appreciate so much. it. This Thank is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com at the 2022 Dead Man's Curb Wild Hot Rod Weekend. For more cool events like this, make sure you check your car show calendars. NortheastWheelsEvents.com SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, UKWheelsEvents.com, and while you're there, post and promote your shows. I'll see you at the shows.